Today we're going to solve a project around the house using Tinkercad. So let's get cracking. All right, so here we are on the gutters. For some reason, this gutter guard company did not make it so that it fills that hole. Friends, I'm going to 3D print a part to fill the gap. Quickly measuring, we're going to go five inches that way and about four inches that way. And it's going to need to be about a four inch part. Let's see what we can make. If you've never tried it before, you can find Tinkercad at tinkercad.com. This is the general workspace. I always choose sign in with Google. We are going to start by simply hitting create 3D design. In Tinkercad, we build with solids, but the first thing I always like to do is to name the file. I'm going to name this one gutter guard. I'm also going to switch from millimeters, which I almost always work in, two inches to do that we click the settings and from metric we simply switch to imperial as a scale i'm going to stay with one to one and this part will fit inside this area so i'm just going to hit close settings that's how easy it is to get a project set up i do also want to quickly show you that we can click back to the tinkercad dashboard and bam our project is saved to the cloud by default they are private designs but you can also click on your designs and you can make them public so everybody can see them in the tinkercad gallery to return to our design we can simply hit tinker this now today we are going to build with the wicked cool sketch tool i'm going to bring this out and i want to highlight that it is built to be metric and it actually fits in a 20 by 20 grid on the metric screen you can see here in the inch grid it also fits inside the quarter inch i'm going to take that dotted gray line and set it right at the center all this did was make it so that our project lines up with the grid lines when we're in it if this is your first time seeing the sketch tool it is amazing tinkercad has built in a sweet preview of it when you click over here you can see they give you all kinds of information on what's new it is animated there's also the pen tool the edit tool cool actions and how to add points when you're done checking this out you can simply continue back to sketch i have also got a boatload of tutorials i'm going to put them right up here in the corner for you so this allows us to draw straight lines and bezier curves. Of course, our project is going to be using straight lines. Let me show you how easy this is. I'm going to set my grid to a quarter inch just because I do not need to be super precise. I'm going to start up here and remember I wanted a four inch gutter guard. So bam, I can just go down to four inches and click to make that straight line. I'm going to make this piece four inches as well notice i missed not a big deal we'll fix that in a minute i need to come down here and i'm going to do four inches as well and then i'm going to stretch this out four inches and then i'm going to come all the way up and of course i want to connect these on a straight line that is my basic design so now that we've made this initially we can double click it so we can see the points I can click on a side, once again, double checking the measurements. I can also come over here and I can add more points. Well, I want a point right here. And I want a point right here. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna switch back to the manipulate tool. Now that I've got that point, I can simply grab it, bring it in and drop it in the perfect location. When I click on this, I can see the measurement. Notice it's currently one and three quarter. If I really wanted it to be two inches, I can click and change it. I can also type the number, watch this, if I do 1.5, bam, it adjusts that. Now I don't want that, that would break everything. So I'm gonna do Control Z to undo. I do wanna check this measurement. I already had it at two inches, which is absolutely awesome. All right, so remember we needed to adjust this one down here. If we click on it, it's three and three quarter. The best way to fix that is to make sure your nudge is where you want. I'm gonna do an eighth inch nudge, and I simply wanna grab this and I wanna drag it out. Now, if we check that measurement, three and seven eighths, if we drag it one more, bingo, that gives us our four inch measurement. I'm gonna do control Z just to show you how this works. If we had typed four right here, Notice it split the difference and set it to both sides, which makes the shape not what we wanted. Again, I'm gonna do Control Z and we wanna nudge it out. I do also wanna highlight you can do that nudge by selecting the line and using your arrow keys. 
because I had it on an eighth inch nudge, it was easy to go tap, tap, and boom, get the part exactly the way we wanted. How cool is that? While I'm in here, I do want to show you something else. If we double click this, it auto rounds everything, which of course would break it. Control Z fixes that as well. Now I do want to highlight a brand new feature. Sometimes when we're working here, these measurements get in our way. Check it out. We can now hide them. There is also a shortcut. If you look at that again, it is shift D to hide the dimensions. Now this part is complete and we can go to the next step, but I do want to show you we can make additional parts while we're in here. If I back out of edit mode, which I could have done by clicking here, we can hit the pen and draw again. Now I showed you a moment ago straight lines, so I'm just going to quickly click and make a diamond. I do want to highlight that if you double click that, of course we get to the edit mode. If you double click that again, bam, it auto smooths it. Now this gives us three different kind of curves. Of course, we could leave as a perfect circle. I do also want to let you know you can twist these and notice they make smooth curves. Of course, you can also click on any part and switch it back to a line. And then you can also click on points and you can break them. This gives you the dotted handle and it lets you make custom curves without affecting the other side. You can make all kinds of awesome shapes. They are extremely powerful, and once again, I will highlight I've got a full playlist that has a ton of cool tutorials using the sketch tool. Right now, I'm going to hit finish sketch. This is going to be our awesome project. I'm going to shrink this down to notice I still have my quarter inch snap grid on. I'm going to switch it back to eighth of an inch, and I'm going to make this part a eighth of an inch thick. When we actually print it, I will make it thinner, but we'll do that in the slicer. Now, friends, we need to cut holes out of that. We're going to do that with a sweet tool. We're going to go to the grid, which you can find by just typing grid. And there are several grids out here. We are going to complete this project with the awesome honeycomb grid. I'm going to set it right there and we'll come back to it in a minute. I do also want to show you the polygon grid. Now the actual gutter guard had circles. I'm going to show you how you can take this polygon and make it like a circle by simply maxing it out to 32. You can pick the numbers. You can then switch to the columns. If I make this 15 and press enter and 15 and press enter, you do have to wait a moment for it to snap. And of course you can make it a hole and then adjust the numbers to cut those out until you had the exact right measurement. This is a fantastic tool for making rows of cylinders or whatever polygon you want. Of course, you simply type in the numbers to get the spacing how you'd like as well. I do want to let you know if you adjust the handles, these numbers no longer work. You can still make awesome parts, but just understand using the handles breaks these parameters. Notice none of these moved, even though the measurements of each shape changed. Now, like I said, we're going to use the honeycomb grid just because I enjoy it. We are going to make it a hole, and now I'm just going to adjust its properties. The first thing I'm going to do is make it so the columns fit. We're going to change this to 17 and press enter. It takes a moment for it to snap. I'm going to make this 15 and press enter, and then I'm going to change the spacing to 0.12. Notice now it fills up the area. If you ever have a glitch, like this doesn't look quite right, just change one of these numbers a little bit. I'm going to make it 0 0.13. And then I'm going to adjust this to 16 and press enter until I've got it so it fills my shape the way I want. I'm going to just bump this up to 17. Once again, I found these numbers by just using guess and check. I am going to be happy with that. I'm going to select it all, choose L for a line from the top. Sometimes this is easier to view. There it is, the middle that I want and the middle that I want. With those put together, I'm going to select them both and do control G to group. Bam, that is our gutter guard. Now notice here, there's a little artifact. Check this out. We're going to double click to edit. I'm going to click on this shape and I'm going to switch it back to 0.12. I'm just adjusting the number a tiny bit. And when we click outside, if you watch closely, <laughs> we got a node fails to load, but we also got rid of that artifact. Quite often, those are just rounding errors. So if you double click your shape, click on it and choose a different number. I'm going to do 0.125 just for giggles. 
Let's see if we get the rounding error when we click out here. We did not, and bam, the artifact is gone as well. How cool is that? Now, friends, I want to send this to my 3D printer. I will highlight. See how it doesn't fit on the work plane in here, but I do know it's going to fit on my printer. We could click on this, choose settings, and where this says 7.87, I'm going to change it now to 10 and 10. Double click, select type 10 and hit close settings. If you prefer having it look like that, now you've got more room in your Tinkercad build area. Of course, you do need to make sure your part fits on your printer. We are going to export this as an STL. I'm going to save it in my 3D modeling folder and I'm going to call it Gutter Guard. We're going to be working with the Bamboo Labs P1S. I'm going to switch to 0.2 standard. I'm not going to print this super sturdy because right now I'm just testing to see if the system works. Let's quickly add our gutter guard. It does fit. Instead of green, let's switch to the generic PLA white. And remember, this is an eighth of an inch thick. I'm going to simply change the thickness using the scale tool. Notice it switches to metric. Instead of three millimeters, I'm going to shut off uniform scale. And I'm going to make this one millimeter thick. Bingo. That part is set. Let's hit slice plate. Notice it's going to take us an hour and 10 minutes, and we can simply hit print plate and send it to the 3D printer. Of course, after a moment, it bounces to the device menu, and when it finishes downloading, of course, we can click play and monitor everything from afar. And here we are. Problem solved. How cool is that? So friends, I hope you totally enjoyed that. Of course, if I need adjustments since I made this project, I can always go back and make new versions in a few minutes. I do also want to highlight I've got a bunch of tutorials aimed at beginners. If you're interested, I'll of course highlight the playlist up above in the cards. I do want to quickly say thank you to everybody that support me via YouTube memberships. There are three different levels of support starting as low as $5 a month. One of my favorite benefits is early access to videos. I also want to say thank you to everybody that support me via my Patreon group. Love how that is growing. There is an awesome messaging board. Of course, you can learn more with the bit.ly up above or the link in the description. Finally, friends, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget every time you hit that like button, share a video, add a comment down below, or hit subscribe. You're helping HL Mod Tech get just a little bit bigger, which absolutely makes my day. Friends, have a glorious day and keep tinkering.